All right, back in Creech Manor versus the Poltergeist. We are with Selena as our final girl. She only needs to rescue four people, which actually seems kind of neat for this scenario. If you look at the layout of this manor, it is hard to get out of here. So it seems like getting people uh, to safety, the victims out of here, might be a little bit uh, difficult. So I, I like the idea of only having four to rescue. We have, I pulled, let's see here, um, everything has been shuffled up. There's 10 different tarot cards in here than, than any other play, so who knows. Strange Trophies was the setup card I grabbed, so that's how the layout starts, which is bizarre. That means I start in the trophy room, the killer in the foyer. We have a lot of people on the top floors here, which means that they're hard to get out. That's not a good way to start. We start knowing where the mysterious pills are, the map, and the old revolver. So the old revolver may only modify the weak attack action card. But remember, we don't really fight the poltergeist in this. There's a map. Discard during an action phase for... Oh, it's too far away for these old eyes to read. What does that say? Discard during the action phase, and then for each item deck, do one of the following. If the top card is face down, you may turn it face up. If the top card is face up, you may discard it from the game and turn the next card face up. Hey, in a game like this, or, or this particular scenario where, where our victory condition is to save Carolyn, finding Carolyn is the trick. So, so maybe searching the attic is a great idea uh, to get that map. And then the mysterious pills. I love this. This might make me hallucinate, but what hallucination could be worse than this? That's kind of a good point. Uh, discard this during the action phase and choose one of the following. Reduce horror by one or heal two. Okay. On to it, poltergeist. Let's see here. Let's... Oh, no, no, no. We have to do an event card to make it... Oh, good deal. Liquid Courage. We like that. We like that one, right? Victims will follow you into the killer space. This whole stack of cards, I think I've drawn that one twice now. Just kind of checking this out here. Since I don't know the way around this too much. All right, let's see here. I want to, where do we start in the trophy room? Let's, let's think about, well, we need to search no matter what. And I like the idea of the attic. The problem is I don't like being pinned down by the attic, but the attic is also one, two, three, four, five spaces away. So I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of walking here. This is such a hard place to, to get people in and out of. I mean, I think people are just going to have to die. All right, let's try to reduce the horror by... Oh, we got one success. That's all right. Let's see what that does for us. One success. Oh, I can't pick this card up. Okay, one success is minus one time and minus one horror. I mean, you can't complain about that. That's good stuff. Let's do... Let's see how far... Let's see how far... You know what we can do? One of the other things I never think about is we can discard a card for time. And if we discarded cards for time, we could pick up these sprint cards and get our butts up into the attic really quickly. Assuming we have good rolls, of course. That's always the downside of this game, is that you have to roll as well as you need to, which never seems to happen. Which means that you should take the, like, improvise card or the close call cards as well. So let's think about, what would that cost us? With the five time we have, we could actually buy both sprints and a close call, so that's not awful. We do have walk here, which could get us two spaces over if we're really lucky. I don't think we're really lucky. I think <laughs> I think that let's let's try to bring down the the pain here first. Ah, oh, man, that's awful. So we have a complete fail, which is minus two time unless we can discard every single card. Boy, that's that's awful, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Why not, right? That gives us two successes on a focus, which is minus one horror, but plus two time, which kind of works out the same if I discarded the two anyway. So maybe that's, I mean, not ideal. We have no cards in our hand, but now in the planning phase, we do have seven points, and that means we can take two sprints for four points. That leaves us three points. We could take a close call and a search. How many spaces away are we? One, two, three, four, five. Let's do it. Let's take a, let's, I mean, we could take an improvise as well, but I don't have any faith in our ability to roll well. So let's take a close call and a search. Okay. And we'll reset that. The killer gets to move two spaces now to the closest victim or final girl. That's going to be just up here. Going to kill one person. Already brings the horror. See, I knew it. Already brings the horror up one level. 
because bloodlust just went up one. And what does the terror card say? <gasps> Minor dark power, psychic confusion. If Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next terror card. This is probably an awful card to draw first thing. <laughs> okay, so roll. Oh my gosh. Roll minus one die when resolving a search card. Prior to playing a search card, you may spend three time to ignore this penalty. Discard this card when you find Carolyn. Oh my word, look at that. That's going to make this next to impossible. <laughs> oh my gosh. That might be the worst thing out there. Okay, so somehow we got to remember that that's the situation we're in. Uh, somebody did die, so somebody's going to panic this person right here. They're going to panic to space number two, which looks like it's over there. And Oh no, wait a minute, that's up here. That's up there with me, sorry. That's a one and a two. Okay. So for whatever good that does us anyway, uh, then the upkeep phase, we don't have anything going on. So it's back to us. So let's just try to, I mean, maybe we can sprint downstairs and we can already rescue somebody, right? We can run downstairs. One, two, three. Theoretically, we could get here and then one, two, three over to the garage. The only reason why I wanted to go to the attic was for the map, but Maybe getting somebody out of this place might be a good idea just early on since we only need four to... What is her power anyway? When resolving a search... Oh my goodness! When resolving a search action, roll two additional dice. Okay. Plans have changed. Let's, <laughs> Let's see here. We have one success and a... We can pay for it. So, Oh, you know what? I didn't put these... Other cards back out last time. They're all the free ones, right? Okay. So let's say... I mean, what is that? That's still uh, two spaces and minus one time. So let's just move two spaces. So let's go... Let's go uh, from here to go one, two. Unfortunately, that puts us in range of the killer, though. Okay, and then we'll play a second sprint card. And we really just need the one success to get out of the building with two people. And that's... That's maybe an early win, about an early loss. So we have a fail in that. Now, man, we have that close call card, or we can guarantee one success, which I kind of think is the right move, right? If, if we can guarantee one success for these two cards, we're not going to be in a place we can search anyway, so who cares? That'll get it back on the board, and there's already a search out here, so I think so. I think we're going to play this, these two, to turn that four into a success. That's going to give us minus one time, but move up to two spaces. Those two spaces are going to be one, two. We're outside, and we've rescued two people. Now, these two people, we have move a space, take a search. We can even take a search card. Her thing is baller. Look at that. Okay. Oh, wow, she has a minus two horror option, too. Look at Selena go. She is a killer. Look at that, and plus two time. What do we do? Okay, well, I really like the idea of the of reducing the horror by two right away, right? We need to keep the horror really low, and then I don't want to take a search card because we're not anywhere near a search yet, so um, we could do take... Uh, we could move one space, or... Yeah, let's do that. Let's move one space just so that... Ooh, that puts us closer to the killer, though. That's okay. That's okay. Let's go right here. Let's go right there. Okay. So now we get to buy some cards. Here's all of our cards back because, you know, we are terrible. And we don't have the sprint cards anymore. They are gone. So why don't we take... Why don't we take... Let's get us a search card. So that'll cost us two. And then let's take a... A guard, well, gosh, see, this thing doesn't really attack, right? But mm, maybe we don't take the search. Maybe we take, well, we are right by the garage. So maybe we should take a garage, I mean, a garage, a search and a close call. We only have four points, but we can spend three right here. Well, you know what? The guard card can still be used to give it away. And you never know, because I know in this deck that there's some pain in there. So let's do that. We'll reset that. They will move towards the nearest victim and kill this person. Right here, that'll push it up and reveal the dark power, which is, I keep drawing this card, and I swear to you, I shuffled this. Invisible barrier, you may not enter a exit space with Carolyn unless you have full health. That's okay, that seems like a not so bad one. I really don't know what the rest of them are. And then, 
Of course, the shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, discard this card. But it is two horror. One, two, of course it is. And then move toward the nearest victim. Target the nearest victim, rather. Move two spaces, because our boots are currently two here. One, two. And then attack him. Thankfully, for once, there's nobody there. And then there's uh, no panicking by anybody. And no upkeep phase. So it's back to us with this giant stack. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. The hand limit is ten. So we do have to be aware of that. So let's, let's put the cards back here that we didn't buy. Because I keep forgetting to do that. All right, weak attack and short rest can go kind of in the back burner here, as can guard. So that gives us two walks, two focuses, and a search. Now, if we can get really lucky with a focus and two dice, we can drop down to where we get three dice, right? And that's good business. That's, that's what we need. Well, we have one success. So one success is still drop it by one and minus one time. So it's not the end of the world. At least it gets us an extra die for now. That's good news. Let's see how far we can walk with our three dice. I guess we're going to the garage. And we have, oh no, only one success. Two pay fours though. So let's see here. What do they call that? Does that have a name? No, I don't know. I'm sure it's in the manual somewhere, which I don't have on a little hotkey. Okay, <laughs> so let's see here. We have, we tried to walk and we can move only one space. Now, I really want to walk three spaces at minimum here. So if we dump guard and weak attack, that'll give us two successes for a walk, which lets us move two spaces. It still costs us one time, but that's at least a little better. Okay, that's at least a little better. Now, let's try to walk again, because I want to get into that little room over there in the garage. One success, that's all I care about. That's good enough, right? One space over into the garage, minus one time. Now for some searching. We have one search card. Now, what was the deal? Roll minus one die when resolving a search card. Prior to playing a search, I may spend three time to ignore this penalty. So the problem is is that's all I have is three time. So I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're just going to only roll two dice for this search and see what happens. Of course, that's what's going to happen. We got to fail and that. So if I dump these two, we can take the top card of the garage, which is the mysterious pills, which is going to leave us not in a good spot here. So <laughs> because... Oh, I think we have to, though. So we're going to dump those two cards for one success. It costs us one time. Take the top item card at my space, which is the Mysterious Pills. The reason why I think this is the thing to do is because at least it lets us drop the horror back down because we're going to have to keep the horror very low if we want to be able to find Carolyn. So because of this psychic confusion card that we have up here that is preventing us from just, you know, rolling all of our dice. So I think that maybe that's our best bet. So that's us done. We're going to spend our two time on a search card, I guess. We're going to replenish the cards. And then we are going to let the bad guy move two spaces to the closest person. Now, I am one, two, three away. One, two. Yeah, they only get to go one, two right there and then pull a terror card. The ground is shaking. Place the poltergeist in your space. Okay, then target a victim or the final girl, so they're with me, and attack me for one damage. And remember, we don't we have that silly, yeah, we do, the invisible barrier card. We can't get outside now until we heal. Oh, man. If I take any da oh, man, if I take any damage, all my moves during the next action phase are panicked. Well, I can't move because we only have one card. <laughs> okay, there's no panic phase, no upkeep phase. It's our turn. We're going to search and roll just two dice. Let's see what happens. We got one success. Okay. Oh, that's reset to six. Okay, so with our one success, we have minus one time and take the top card of my space, which is a flashlight. Once per action phase, for one time, you may look at the top card of the terror deck Leave it or place it at the bottom of the deck. So that's that's what we got there, the flashlight. Oh, man. 
All right. Well, let's see here. That's 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 it is what it is, right? I mean, we had no cards. That was our whole turn. That was it. So not not Carolyn, which is who we need to find here. So now we're going to go shopping and I'm going to take all my free cards back and we still have five. So let's peel off another two points for a search. And then I suppose, I mean, we're right in there with this thing, and the retaliate card is four. We can't hurt it anyway. So maybe a guard and a close call are the cards we take. Let me just double check here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The hand limit is ten. Okay, so now this thing is going to attack me for one point of damage because we're in the same space. Then it's going to draw a terror card that says, Carolyn, where are you? If Carolyn is not with you, discard and draw the next terror card. Everything was flying around. Plus one horror. We're back down to two dice. Place the poltergeist with the closest victim or in your space if there are no victims. So who's the closest victim? So, I mean, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I, pff, wow, that's the only way upstairs. So there it is. There's the closest victim right here. Way up there all of a sudden. That thing just flew down here, smacked me around, and took off again. <laughs> um, and then it kills this person. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> How's that for a slice of fried bread, huh? Jeez. All right. Oh, and the search card came back out. Okay. Wow. And then there's no panic, no upkeep, so it's right back to us. So let's... Uh... I think we're down here all alone now, right? We may as well search and see what we can find. Wouldn't that be crazy? And we gotta try it, right? Okay, so we're gonna roll two dice. Boom, we got oh, nothing, man, come on. Come on, all right, let's just roll close call on this and pay two time to re-roll. It's the same thing. <laughs> So basically, we just we just wasted cards. So we can get one success out of this if we dump. Well, let's dump guard and weak attack, right? Let's dump those two cards so that we know that we have one success on a search, which is going to cost us one more time. And then take the top card of our space. And we already know what the last one is. So now we have a shotgun. Now we have a shotgun. <laughs> The flavor text, yes, now this is a gun. <laughs> All right, so we have a shotgun now. This says the shotgun cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. Once per turn, you may discard two cards from your hand and roll six dice. Deal damage to each enemy in your space for each star rolled. If at least half of the dice are blank, discard the shotgun. Problem is, I'm not trying to do any damage here, so worthless. So we know now the garage is... is is not worth it, right? Didn't we check that last card? I actually already forgot. I don't know what the last card is. I think it was worthless though, right? Okay, anyway. Now we got to get moving. So let's keep... Oh no, I just super cheated because I rolled all the dice, didn't I? Oh no, I only rolled two. Oh yeah, right, but I had to roll one less. So let's, let's say that we paid all three for that. So we have zero time. That's the only way to fix that mistake. So now... We can do a, I forgot, we have that silly psychic confusion card. So let's focus and see if we can't get back into the three dice realm here. There's one success. Good enough. And that's, oh no, I can, oh man. No, I can't do that because I don't have any time. I can't even do that. We have no time. So we can't roll that because if we fail, oh dear. No, we're stuck. That ends our turn. I mean, we can't roll because we have zero time now, right? So there's everything could potentially cost time, so I can't spend... I don't know. There is a time spot there. But, oh, but I guess it force ends my turn. Okay. So we had one success, so that'll bring that down and cost us the one time, and it force ends our turn. Boom. So now we go shopping with zero time. Boom, all done. We refill the market with these cards and search, search, search. Okay, now, killer phase. They are going to move the closest person. I guess that's here and kill them. Gonna push this up and raise the, of course, the horror by two. 
That happens all too easily. <laughs> the next card, it's broken. Place the broken ladder token covering the ladder on the board. The ladder may no longer be used and the spaces connected to it are no longer considered adjacent. Oh, man. It is. So now this ladder over here is broken. So that is no longer in the game. And plus one horror. Hey, that's cool. Look at that. We went from, from here to all the way up there. All right, so there's no panicking. There's no upkeep. It's just back to us who are hanging out in the garage doing nothing good. So let's take this opportunity to just burn some cards, right? So we can roll two cards. Let's do a short rest. Oops. One of them didn't, didn't make it. Ugh. Two fails. So let's spend... Uh, Wow, that's insane. Because two fails means... <sighs> Here I thought we could heal. Well, let's dump walk and focus, I guess. So we're going to discard these two to have one success on a short rest, which will heal for one. We have that invisible barrier, so we have to keep our hit points high. That costs us one time. So with our... Five points, we're going to go shopping for two sprints and a close call to re-roll. That's all we can do on our turn. Oh, and we get these back, of course, the free cards. Short rest. Oh, these are free ones that we don't have. And now it's up to the killer again to move two spaces and kill this person. Man, they are just going through this house, just wrecking everybody. Corporeal form of behemoth appears. You may play action cards and inflict damage if you wish. Then, if the behemoth is still alive, take one damage equal to the killer's attack value plus one. So, I'm taking three points of damage. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I never drew a token for my last hit point. So, these are... Here's the one we had last. Let's see here. I had this before. That's two. Oh, man. I gotta shuffle these up now. Because I don't know. I never drew one, apparently. I, I It's part of the setup I forgot to do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know where they are. <laughs> All right. We're just going to take any random one. Problem is I can't put these in a baggie because, you know, if you draw it and you see the face of it, that's no good. Okay. That was terrible. And then this thing disappears. Take damage. Oh, and it says discard an item of my choice. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess we're going to discard the shotgun that doesn't do with any good in this whole scenario. Okay. So that's worthless. Oh, dear. Okay, let's see here. No panicking, no upkeep phase. Nothing happens there. Action phase. So now we have no choice but to try to sprint. We do have... Well, I want to try focus. Let's try to get out of this hole we're in here on a horror. Or not. How about just two fails? That works. Okay. So we lost two time thanks to that. Now we're going to try to sprint. Well, we do have that close call card. Maybe we just play that. It's going to cost us two time, but we get to re-roll the focus. Uh, it's still two fails. Okay, we're good. We're good. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and discard. Uh, since that was our thing, we're going to discard a weak attack and a walk. That gives us one success, which at least lowers this by one, but costs us yet one more time. And we got to keep that horror low. I mean, it's bad enough rolling only two dice. And then, I mean, it's all we can do now is to try to sprint. All right, we have one success on a sprint, which is going to give us minus one, two time. Move, or no, one one time, sorry. And then uh, move up to two spaces. So we're going to go one, two into the foyer, and then we're going to do it again. We have the other sprint card here. Let's see, and two fails. All right, so two fails are going to be move up to one space and take a damage, minus two time, and end your turn, or... Take a, oh yeah, I mean, we may as well, we may as well do the take damage one, right? So move up to one space, we're in the house, we take a damage, minus two time, so we're down to zero here, and then we have, um, we have um, to end our turn, that's that's the force end turn, action phase immediately ends, like there is no no chance of recovery from that, so we are done there. We have zero points to spend, but that still means we can take our three zero cards back. We'll refresh the market here. We have spent sprint. Focus is free. Close call is one. And walk and weak attack is zeros. Okay, so now on to the killer phase. We're going to move. I mean, why wouldn't they go up there? Because there's two people to kill. So they'll kill this person and 
push that up a little bit more. The next terror card says, oh, this is great. The shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, plus two horror. Boom, boom. And then target a victim, walk to them, and kill them. So this person is also dead. We're going to push that up, and it's going to push the horror up one more time. So we are in very bad shape now. This can go horribly wrong very fast. All right, so the killer phase is over. There's no panicking now. There's no upkeep, so it's back to us. And we have focus, walk, and short rest. And we just have to literally be at the mercy of the dice this time. I mean, there's just no... Uh, the good news is, is, because we're almost dead... Let me move that out of the way. Because we're almost dead... Ah, come here, card. Too much stuff in my hand. We do get to roll an extra die because of that. So we're going to roll three dice for a focus and fail every single one, which costs us two time. So we're going to start this round with four time. Then we're going to attempt, uh, well, we have short rest. So if we fail at walking because we're so good, uh, at least it won't end the game. So three dice. There's two successes. Okay, so two successes minus one time. And that, oh, you can't see that. This one, two successes and move up to two spaces. So one, two, I'm gonna just, I guess, go to the closet. Maybe the little girl's hiding in the closet. And then we're gonna attempt a short rest. We have one success there. So one success is heal one and minus one time. Okay, we get to buy cards now. With our whopping two points, we're gonna take all of our cards back and take a sprint, right? I mean, that's all we can do is try to run. Try to run. Okay, so we lose our extra die now, of course, and these cards will fill up the... Ooh, wait a minute. Maybe before we're done, I completely forgot. We can heal for two with this these mysterious pills, right? So maybe we just drink those pills right now, down the hatch, heal for two. The one horror is probably a good idea, but I think we're in trouble anyway. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go on with the killer phase. They're going to move... Oh, boy, they have... They can move four spaces now, so they're going to move down here, kill this person, and push it up a little bit higher. Oh, man. Okay, then I start taking damage if it goes up any higher, which there's nobody left on the board to kill, so I need to find this girl and get out of here. The terror card says, target the final girl and walk 12 steps towards the final girl. <laughs> Kill one victim in each space the killer passes through, including its current and final spaces. It's coming! It's coming! But it does not kill me. It just comes to me, and it kills everybody on the way. Holy smokes. There were three boots there, and each boot has a value of four in this case. So, man, it got to me no matter what. And there's... Ooh, barely. Okay, so there will be an upkeep phase next time because there will be no terror card there. Okay, I'm actually surprised we didn't draw another uh, event card yet. That's really surprising. All right, let's see what we got here. We have weak attack, which does no good. Focus, which we need to roll amazingly well on. Focus, I mean, or walk and sprint. So no search cards in our hand here. Okay, so let's make sure. I always forget to reset my time to six here. Okay, so let's let's work on focus first. We can roll only two dice. Save our ship here. Let's see. We have one success. Boy, I'd really like two successes, but I don't think I can make that happen. Because I need to walk more than I need to, to do that. So let's go minus one horror, minus one time for focus. Then let's try to walk. And if we get really lucky, we can get two successes and not have to burn our other cards. Ay, okay. Is that all we need to do is walk two spaces? We do. I don't care. I'm burning both the weak attack and the sprint just to get two successes out of this, okay? Because we need two successes to put us in the closet. So we're up in the closet. We're minus one time, but that's okay. We're where we want to be. So now we can buy cards for... Our flashlight doesn't even matter. Okay, so we can buy cards for... Four points. So let's just take two searches, right? Why not? There's our four points. Reset that. Reset them. Oh, we got our free cards too. Reset the market here. And then the killer will come to me. 
and attack me for three points of damage. Oh, boy. Okay, and then draw a terror card. And the terror card says, if you're in a window space, we're not, then take a damage. All victims in the window. Oh, my God. It's The trees are alive. Oh, this is so funny. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, then it says, if at least one victim was killed. Let's see, if you are in, none of us are by windows, okay? Um, oh, and then draw an event card. Hey, speak of the devil, right? Uh, frozen in fear. Victims will no longer panic during the panic phase. I mean, somehow we got like two good, good event cards. That's kind of weird. Okay, so the killer phase is over. I'm almost dead. I do get to roll three dice now because of that thing, but minus one because of that thing, right? So plus one for this thing, minus one for this thing on searches. And then as far as the uh, event phase go, or the uh, upkeep phase, now we get to reveal the finale. Dun, dun, dun. What is this now? Oh my goodness. Relentless assault. <laughs> Place the poltergeist in your space. Attack two times. So I'm going to get hit for six points of damage. Next go. So basically, with my hand of two searches, one walk, and a short rest, I need to heal five points. I need to find Carolyn and somehow walk one, two, three spaces when I can only at best walk two, given the cards that I have. Fabulous. All right, well, let's start out with the focus. Let's try to lower the horror here while we have uh, three dice because our hit points are so low. How about one success and two successes? All right, so let's bring these in here. So two successes on a focus are going to give us plus two time and minus one horror. That's good news. And then let's going to do a... Nope, no, we can't do the short rest because we need to... That could end our turn, right? So let's do a search. And because of psychic confusion, we only get to roll two dice. We have one success and then a possible other. So one success and a possible other. I need to be able to walk. I need to be able to search. I think we're just going to have to go with the one success. And that says take the top item minus one times. So minus one time, take the... We're in the closet. So the revolver. whoop de doo That doesn't do us any good. Okay. Let's search again. We need two successes here with only two dice. What are the odds? Complete garbage, of course. Well, I mean, in this scenario, I don't have a choice, right? I can't walk anywhere, and I can't... Short resting isn't going to matter, and I'm going to die no matter what because this thing is going to hit me once. I'm going to flip the token, and then I'm going to get hit a second time. Oh, oh, there she is. There's Carolyn. She was there. Ah, oh, so there's Carolyn hiding in the closet on the last turn of the game, because what's about to happen is I'm going to spend some points. All right, I got seven points. No, I got six points, because that search cost me one. I've got six points, and I can take... I mean, I guess we're taking all the guarding we can, right? We're going to take two guards and two rerolls, because we need to not die, because we're about to get smacked in the face here. Uh, I mean, that's our only shot at this, right? So let's put these back, uh, zero, 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 search. Unbelievable, we found Carolyn hiding in the closet. Oh, I really need, do I have any way to walk? Nope. So the problem we're gonna get into now is that we're gonna be stuck defending ourselves. Like no matter what, right? So if I, let's say I luck out, right, and I roll, Successful guard on both times, right? So I roll four successes. First of all, the odds of that happening. So then what? Then we start the turn in this room with only the ability to walk up to two rooms away. One, two. Because that's all I have is one walk card, right? Then its turn, it will chase me down and hit me again for three and then three. I literally cannot survive that. So instead of taking two guard cards, we're going to take a guard and a sprint. And the only way to win this is going to be to just absorb the damage from one hit. Yeah, here, let's play it out. I've got this figured out. Oh, and we have to heal still because we can't leave because of the invisible barrier. There's no way to do this. <laughs> There's no way to do this. Uh, right, because if we play this out, it attacks me once and... I just have to get lucky with guard and let it not 
kill me, right? Right. So the only way to 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 absorb all three points of damage from that is to burn four cards, which can be these four, right? So there's four cards down for two successes. So I guard all damage. Then it hits me for three. This is the only way to survive this is if this is some, you know, hearts. We're dead. Ah, oh, unbelievable. <laughs> oh, well, I can't say we almost made it either because of this invisible barrier card. We wouldn't have been able to even get out of there. We would have had to rest somehow. And if you look, you know, that long rest card could do the magic, but I can't afford that. I, I just, there's no way to do it. I think early on, maybe if I can start buying some higher powered cards and just like hold on to them for end game. But the problem is I roll so poorly that, you know, none of, no card I play actually works out anyway. So you just end up dying, you know, unless you're rolling incredibly lucky or finding the person immediately. That's uh, that's intense though. And I'm sure a much better player than me has figured out how to do this really well, but I certainly have not. So we did what we could. The poltergeist won the day, but sometimes that happens, but it's it's a blast. I mean, it really is so fun and so tense. And like, I can't believe we actually found her. I didn't think there are 12 cards to search through here and you only know the first three. And uh, so it's just kind of just blind luck trying to find where this girl's hiding in this house. And this It's a fun scenario, that's for sure. This probably hurt us kind of, but probably not as bad as I think. This where we can only roll two or one less card. That probably hurt, you know, only a little bit. But because we were never up in the red here, that would cause all kinds of problems. I think that that's, uh, that's, that's just brutal. And the only thing that we were, was keeping us alive for a while there, and I feel like I probably messed that up somewhere, was having this for an extra die, right? When we were down to just one hit point, I think that that was, that was the only reason why we were able to roll two dice, and that was keeping us alive. But better luck next time, I guess. We'll give it another shot here, see how well we do as the final girl. <laughs> and remember... Games are made for everyone's recreation. We'll see you later.